Well, just wanted to thank you guys for coming today and to help us document some of your story. Um, to start off with, we can have you introduce your guys, introduce yourself and say where you're from. And Perry Hoffman. I'm Candace Hoffman. You're from? Bowdoin, South Dakota. Okay. How'd you guys get started going in the harvesting business? And My dad was business? a harvester. Okay. My brother. That's how we kind of got going, I guess. You kind of took it over from him? Not then? really. It would just kind of fit in with him. We're, I was 18 at the time. Oh, wow. Just out of, just out of high school. Okay. So, and then I, I went with my brother for part of the year. And that's kind of how, never did really go with my dad. So, I, you know. Yeah. Except when I was a kid, so. Right. What made you want to go that route versus anything else? What made you kind of want to be a harvester? I, that's all I ever wanted to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you would kind of, how long have you guys been going then? He's been started in 1972. Okay. And we actively quit going on in 2009, and our son-in-law and daughter did yes. the road trip, and when they get to South Dakota, we help. Okay. Weed harvest and the fall harvest, we help in South Dakota. Do that. Yeah. Um, so where did you run when you would go, and what, or what path did you run follow? Well, we started at Seymour in the early years, and then we moved over to Alma. Okay. Texas. Yeah. Texas, yes. and then we go to Kiowa. Yep. And then kind of. Oh, oh you want Kiowa, to keep going? Pratt. Pratt, and then, and then on to Colby, Colby. And Goodland area. Lyman. And then Midland, South Dakota at times, and Gettysburg, South Dakota, and then home. And then we'd go to. For nine years, we went to Canada. Oh, you did? Okay. But now that we're doing North Dakota and kind of. Getting the people, the boys into the over the border, you know, they don't, they're not real easy to get across the South Africans, especially. Okay. So we uh, kind of quit that, and now he goes to uh, Regent and Mo Montana. Right. Mont Plen Mont Plentywood, Montana. Yeah. Sometimes Rock Lake, North Dakota. Yeah. Uh huh. So what did you do up in Canada? Did you? Is it was it wheat? We or? did. We did wheat and canola and. Uh, some flax. And I think we did some peas maybe up there too. Was it a lot different than, I don't know, than kind of the North Dakota, South Dakota? Or was the environment kind of the same? People are excellent. Okay. Really good to us. And, uh, it was a lot, you know, it was, it was, we were there nine years. Candace never got, she just come up for a visit because visit, the, yeah. our girls were in school. Oh, right. Yeah. But it was good. It was a good time. We had, we spent, that was kind of our fall harvest. There was no okay. fall harvest ground in our country. Um, it used to be everybody just planted wheat. wheat. Okay. And crops are more diversified now. now. We do a lot of beans and corn around there now at home, but we, that was our fall harvest at the corn with the Canada deal. Okay. How long would you kind of be up there? Uh, sometimes a month, six weeks maybe even probably. Oh. It, it was quite long. Good job. Back in the day you went to Nebraska no, and know. did Corn. Irrigated corn. Spent a lifetime in Nebraska, really, our <laughs> first years. You know, uh -huh. When the girls were growing up. And then we, then we kind of quit that, and then we went to Canada. I guess we kind of didn't have our dinner story quite right here. In the early days, we picked corn in Nebraska. Okay. For eight, forever, and then we kind of quit that, and then we went to Canada and did that Canadian thing. Okay. Yep. Well, I think a lot of the corn ground got put into CRP. Um, so how many machines do you guys run? And Five. Okay. Today. Today. We started yeah. with two. Two. You started with two? Two what, and three, well, mainly. For all what, the what size were they? 6600s. Okay. And now they're S670s? 770s. 770s. What changes have you seen in the machinery between when you started to... Oh you can't even describe it. Uh -huh. They're bigger. They're more money. Yeah. And they are full of technology, and their capability is. The so amount of grain they harvest compared to our, our old machines are just, it just, we talked about that a lot of times already, where uh, the amount of crop we put through those machines anymore, it's amazing, which you know with your parents. But to do comparison, I think we spend as much on 
trading probably a header as we used to spend on trading probably three combines and headers wow. together. <laughs> together. Right? So that's somewhat telling you what the cost difference is. Yeah. And actually the, the, the rate that we charge has not gone up it, the same. The same proportion. Proportion is this, yeah. The machinery. It's amazing how much, how much, how much money handled if we can make a living anymore, really. It's, it's really amazing. Uh-huh. Do you remember the cost of the first machine you bought? There were, I think there were like 22,000. And what year was that? Uh, 72. Okay. And uh, the grain cart, my first grain cart was 2,500. Oh, wow. It was a wet more and orange thing. I bought it in Elbow, Oklahoma. Uh-huh. Everybody wondered what it was. Uh-huh. It, it wasn't many around. Did the job though. Yeah, we, we used the farmer's tractors. That got to be a pain, but anyway, it worked out. Uh huh. Um, let's see. So you kind of talked about the price of work changing. Do you remember kind of in the beginning what? It I was? remember when I was a kid. My dad always said we charged three and a half an acre and a nickel and a nickel. That was uh -huh. forever. Uh huh. And when we started, I I don't remember where we were at. I think it was ten and. Uh, I don't think it was. I was thinking more like eight or something, yeah. maybe. It might have been less than that. Your dad might remember better than me. Like three eighths or three tens or whatever. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. The change in that. Um, has there been a change in how you move your equipment down the road? There the definitely. first ones, first ones that we pulled them on the ground, we pulled the couplers on our drive lines and pulled oh. them on the ground. Really? All the way from South Dakota to Kansas out here, Kiowa, uh -huh. and all the way to the North Dakota border by Langdon. I can remember when we moved from Pratt to Goodland. Uh -huh. That was a long move. Uh -huh. Sometimes we couldn't make it in a day. It was always hot and windy, the Northwest. Gas Southwest burning winter. trucks that wanted to, what oh. is it called, vapor log, yeah. or what's it called? Yeah, vapor And log. get hot. Oh, uh, and so now, have to. now they move from Pratt to that area and they cut that day. Yeah. yeah. So, yes, it has been. And we did changed. two towards the end. We made it. it yeah, was but better, I said when we started, days, yes. Yeah. It was an ugly move. Yeah. Um, so now you haul them in combine trailers? Trailers, and, I keep getting yeah. Um, did you ever have like road machines a long ways or is it just kind not of? Not a lot, not okay. a lot. Really. At times from Kiowa to Pratt, that's yeah. not a very. Right. Not and we were miles. north of Kiowa. Yeah. yeah, you could do that at one stop. You cover 50 miles easily. I, I can remember those tired wood reels. Pulling them on the ground, they would really hum, you know, from the, being on the ground and going down the road. I suppose 40, 50 miles an hour. I don't remember. Uh huh. But anyway. <laughs> That's how you did it. Yeah. Um, so, how many employees do you guys usually hire or had you hired over the years? We used to be able to hire all American kids. Uh -huh. You know, we could take college kids or high school kids, and we they would fit the terms of our employment. You know, because we didn't have a lot of fall work. And right. When we started doing fall work, then we started hiring. You know, one family might have three boys, and you could take a couple of them, but the families got smaller, and mm -hmm. the kids didn't want to go and harvest, and our our length of Harvests got longer. Right. So we started doing J ones and H two A's. Okay. And we still do that today. Okay. Not that we don't want to hire Americans, but we just have Hard sometimes time. no um, applicants. Yeah. Yeah. Not as many maybe think of it as an adventure. Right. Like maybe they did. Where did you draw your Americans from? Which states? It's usually from around home. Okay, around home. They we had go. a small town. Holman is a Catholic community. Big families, and I remember we'd say, "Can we go harvest?" No, you can't go along this year. I take your brother's done. I remember saying that to some of those kids. There were several in one family. Well, the one family we had four of them, didn't we? Yes. We didn't have the girl, but we had all the boys. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a cool story. The yeah. One, good. One's a teacher. One's a priest. One's a line man. And what's the other one? But baker. Yeah. 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 He's a banker, so that was one family. And you would, you took them along for a harp? Yeah, harp not all at the same time. Okay. The one is a priest. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you don't hear this, but he was the worst one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
one thing yeah. some of those. Well, I, I can remember they some, were of, all good. some of the boys that we took had never stayed overnight in a motel. And usually the first night we'd have to have a motel because we couldn't get all the way down. And uh -huh. They'd be amazed that there was TVs and everything in these rooms. I mean, times have was, changed so much. And yeah. It was pretty cool, really. Yeah. Some didn't know how to order off a menu. You had never. Been really? Off. Yes. Really, honestly. I, I yes. remember that quite a bit, actually. Yeah. Teaching them more than just harvest skills. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's sure. For sure. Um, do you guys ha do you stay in trailers for most of the? We we're all, always have. Always have. Yes. Okay. Um, and then talk about like your. You mentioned your girls, growing up. Did they grow up? Come along with Our you? Our girls yep. grew up on the harvest and. They eventually learned how to, they started out in the kitchen with me, of uh -huh. course, and we'd take meals to the field, and as they got older, they learned how to run the grain cart. And, Combines, and you know, combine. we'd switch off, and then that's how they kind of learned. Sometimes they didn't do much good, they'd maybe run the header in the ground or something, <laughs> but eventually they got better, and, <laughs> and then they operated combine somewhat when we needed them. Uh -huh. that, was, that was really good. What, um, I guess, what did you value by having your family along? Well, everything, because a lot of times in the fall he'd be gone, you know, it's, it's not the best way to be bringing up a family to have to be split like that. But um, I think for our girls, it learned, they learned how to communicate with anyone, how to play with anyone. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter what age they were or yeah. whatever. And they still have really good friends that they met way back when yeah. on the harvest. It's pretty cool. In like some of the towns and yeah. Right. Yeah. And for us too, uh, a few years ago we went to Texas and some friends rode with us. We didn't need a map. <laughs> <laughs> and everywhere we went we knew somebody. We knew a little cafe that was good to eat at. We knew the next gas station where it was going to be. Uh -huh. <laughs> Stop in and see different friends along the way and they, they still talk about it. Uh -huh. yeah. Customers and friends. Yeah. It was good. You do. You get lifelong friends. Yeah, and that's what's so neat about coming to the harvest meeting. You get to see those friends all together at one time, uh -huh. and meet new ones. Yeah, a and lot of a lot of guys, we, people on the harvest we never see except the harvest meeting because we never run into them on the road, you know. Right. And of course, some of them we see all the time, but uh, there's a lot of people we've only seen once a year, mm -hmm. and that's at the harvest. We used to have two years, you know, two. Right. Years, yeah. I I don't know how we made time for that. We we <laughs> a lot of them. Right. Two times a year, that took a lot of time out of your, yeah. your winter. Uh -huh. so. Yeah, you, you probably make a lot of friends with other harvesters, but you don't, like, they're not living in your community yet necessarily, but That's right. they're yes. some of your better friends. And that, another thing about it, you know, like if you get to, say, um, Grand Island, Nebraska, this harvester lives there and you need something, people are really good about helping you out. Uh huh. Yeah, you've made We've friends. We've had this little bond, you know, throughout you know, the <laughs> amongst harvesters. Yeah. yeah, I think it's cool. You mentioned you could go back through, and you really don't even need a map. Like you probably don't. You probably know. We know all the shortcuts. You know, uh huh. I mean, <laughs> Two eighty one is we use it, but we don't go on the, the whole time. Uh huh. You know, we work our way over to it, and then we take some shortcuts, like in northern Kansas by Downs. There's a Ten, yep. Ten mile. You guys, I'm sure you guys maybe used the two, maybe. So. <laughs> I think you're east farther. You probably weren't. You probably weren't on that. Yeah, one. I don't think so. Yeah. It's funny that you, you know, you go there like once a year, but you still remember it, like it was. Yeah. I can. Your home. I can drive down and I go. Oh, what road is that now? I can only, <laughs> it's that one by down. Uh huh. Has that shed or? <laughs> <laughs> um. Let's see. Uh, have there been changes in the weather that have affected your harvest path and like your ability to make it to different stops, or have you seen that at all? I'm hoping that we don't get back to where we were in. And I think your family, not maybe not, yeah, your family was down there that year in, Baja, in you know, Texas. We were there for six weeks and three days. Uh -huh. <laughs> your uncle. Uh -huh. I mean, um, well, he, I think he's your uncle. He passed away. In this the smaller guy. Bruce. Bruce. Bruce yeah, yeah. We were in Texas so long they wanted to enroll the kids in school. <laughs> and uh, your uncle did woodworking. Yes. And he cut out the little state of South of Texas, Texas and put a raindrop in the middle of oh, it. Oh, did it? And we still have that? Yeah. In the fun. trailer court. So huh, that was I didn't fun. know that. Yeah, it was, he was a good 
good guy. We, we kind of got our days and nights mixed up uh -huh. then because we'd have barbecues in the trailer court and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. I remember yeah. the peaches were getting ready by then. Even <laughs> by the time we left, we stayed there a long time. Almost permanent we residence. Talk about stops. You know, when you're in Texas, it was brisket. Yeah. And when we went to Kiowa, it was ribs. The guy that would chicken fried steaks. Was yeah, awesome. chicken fried steaks. And then when, by the time it got to Goodland, it was cherries. <laughs> yeah, really? The cherries were in season all the time. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, so back so, to the, your question. I hope we don't get the rain that you know yeah. that we're tied in. I, I don't know how we could possibly do that anymore. Stay there that long. I think we had to give up uh, Kiowa and we had to give up Pratt. I think we went right to Goodland. Right. And uh, another thing with weather that might have affected it is they started putting irrigation in at Pratt. Oh. There was and this and they felt there. like there was more humidity. It was harder sometimes to get the crops out. Uh-huh. That's what other than that. There I, used to be a lot more weed at Pratt, too. Now there's a lot of this stuff up there. I don't know if moisture, but the genetics on grains, I think, has really changed. We used to be at a stop for a week or 10 days, and sometimes now, Three, four days, you're out of there. Uh huh. It's pretty quick. Yeah. It's just a lot quicker in yes. some places. Yes. I am sure it has to do with varieties and so on. You know, they, they mature probably a lot quicker or whatever, more uniform possibly. Uh huh. Um, let's see. Kind of talked about some of that. Um, kind of talk about what you were mentioning earlier about. Um, recruiting people for the organization I think you were a part of. Perry um, and I went and we got recruited and nobody in the northern states had heard about U.S. Custom Harvesters that had started here in Texas. Right. And so um, it was before cell phones and all this kind of thing so we'd go to an implement dealer and we'd get a list of names of people that did custom cutter cutting and uh, I would take and print it off on typing paper and then glue it to postcards. That's before you could print. I thought the recipe card came. Yeah. Oh, no, it was post, well, oh. whatever, it yeah, doesn't okay. matter, but uh -huh. we'd send out these invitations and we'd go rent a room in a hotel and we'd have coffee and cookies and pop and stuff and invite these people to come hear about it. We'd give a short little presentation about U.S. Custom Harvesters and try to recruit members. Uh -huh. Did so you there's get always a challenge to know if anybody is even going to show up. Really? I mean, we were, I mean, I remember at Devil's Lake and something. We, we did it through South Dakota, Minnesota, North Dakota, and we did recruit a lot of people, and I know there's some that are still members that we recruited. Uh-huh. So it's fun to see them. Yeah, um, to help kind of grow some of the, the northern yeah. states' population. Yeah, but it was, it was quite difficult because we had no, no way of knowing who, when, where, and how. And I'd have to say in the older days, People never communicated as well as they do now, as far as, you know. Everybody was afraid they were going to take your job away. You know, a lot of people. Really? I really them. feel that yes. way. Yes. In my dad's days and in my early days, you know, never communicated as well as we do now. And now it's more, you would say. You help me and I'll help you. And I mean, it just. And it's so instant. Instant now. You have a, I yeah. think you have a cell phone. You can call anybody anywhere, anytime, or text them or whatever you do. It used to be in Kiowa, Kansas, we'd wait in line probably for two hours to use the, the one or two pay phones in town. I'm telling you. And if you got up there and nobody day. answered oh, on no. the other end, yeah. you'd be like, oh dear, who can I call, you know. Well, yeah. I started using phones like in John Deere dealers and in elevators and stuff that they, they trusted me to use them. And otherwise, those phones, especially Kiowa, was terrible. I don't think, Iowa, Texas was too, I think. Kiowa used to have a slug of cutters in it. Yes, they still do, I think, quite a few, compared to a lot of our areas. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's kind of the main hub there. Mm -hmm. yes. Are there a lot of harvesters out of, like, the area that you guys are from? At one time, there were four or five. Maybe even. In the early years. And now, we'd be the only ones now, right? Yep. But even in his day, his dad, um, out of this go, my dad's brother was married to his mom's sister and they did harvesting and they okay. went together and um, there was also another couple so at that time there were four couples out about them and it's a small community. Uh -huh. 
Did you uh, know what you were getting into when you married? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> the first year moving south, we had an older gentleman, he wanted coffee. Uh -huh. And I went to order him a cup of coffee and they couldn't understand me. Oh. I was like, oh no, all year, nobody's going to be able to talk to me. <laughs> but I just don't know why he couldn't understand coffee. I finally had to write it down so he could give me a cup of coffee. <laughs> it was like at a drive-in. Uh huh. Thing. It wasn't McDonald's or anything. But I that think type it was a little cafe uh, in Oklahoma. There, no, I was. I was standing outside. I remember oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it was hard for them to stop, so I would stop and I'd get the food and take it to them. And yeah, came well, a long ways. Yeah, on that, all that stuff. You know, Jada does a wonderful job of uh, organizing the food and stuff. Not that Candace didn't, but I mean. It's, I think things are more convenient in our days. You, you didn't have all the easy. We didn't have pre-wrapped things. Yeah. Like they do now, or yeah. individually packed and that kind of stuff if you want to use it. But, um, and the coolers and all that stuff has gotten changed. Changed. It's yes. a lot better. And, yeah. Um, yeah, did you ever like stay somewhere it was a long drive to the grocery store or was that kind of always close for you to be able to get meals? The grocery store. The, yeah, when we, st when we stayed at Midland, the only grocery store was in like the camp store. Uh -huh. And that's big country. It's like um, an hour drive into Pier and probably half hour or more to fill up. It, it's yeah, long it's, yeah, it's long. I think that would have been the worst. And, and sometimes they had longer trips, like Western Kansas, the trip to yep. the field was longer. Oh, yeah. I probably <laughs> shouldn't plan mention for that. this, but I got picked up speedy one time. <laughs> And I didn't have enough cash, and he made me go to uh, some place and write a check. Oh. And then I gave it to him, and he goes, no, now we got to find a mailbox. Oh, <laughs> so, man. Yeah. Trying to get out to the field Trying too fast? Trying to get fast. out to the field. I was running late, yeah. For, for shopping, supper? Probably. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I remember, one thing I'd like to, hey, you know, I remember getting our first credit card. Uh -huh. Maybe one card, or did you get one too? I think, and it was like a privilege. It was like a... It was, they don't send them to you like now, they yeah. send them to you and hope you use them. Uh -huh. It was really a big deal to get a, to get a credit card in the days. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people would know what they were when we first had them. You know, in small towns, you never could use them like a big cafe. Yeah. So you had to carry a lot of cash. Really. Yeah, you don't, you don't think about that. You know, most normal people just stay in their same community. You yes. guys are trying to make business work. And out on the road. You know, you couldn't write a check just anywhere. They didn't know you or whatever, but yeah. Huh. Okay, we had accounts in some grocery stores. I, in fact, I charged groceries, I think, in Texas and Kansas. Sure. And at home, I never did, you know. I never <laughs> ran an account, but it was handy because then I could, if I was needed bread for sandwiches, I'd send one of the crew members up and they could just charge a little yeah. bread or whatever. Yeah, yes. I think I, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was a deal, really. Pam, when we leave, Um, what was maybe a, the biggest pressure or a big pressure that you might have faced during the harvest season or maybe even over your career? What would you say is like a pressure that you faced? I think I, I found out the worst stress for me is, is not knowing if you're going to cut. If uh -huh. it rained and got yeah. wet, we would usually do something. But, you know, you possibly could cut at 5, 6 o'clock. That was the most stress for me. Uh -huh. When we rained out, no, we're not going to harvest relieved of it you know and let the crew do something but yeah but that you know sometimes we'd start at between five and seven I'd always said it dries sometimes better then than any time when we first started I didn't have a, I had a wash machine but not a dryer uh -huh. and I'd hang the clothes out on this square tr yeah. clothesline and he'd always ask me how are the clothes drying today <laughs> and that would be our indication I'm not if, you. They would if probably the crop not dry was going to be getting dry forever and all of a sudden she said boy they're drying out so <laughs> and that meant you better get going yeah, we better get the guys rounded up you know <laughs> but communication you know they all got phones and everything but, uh, yeah before you had to oh it's time to go no, i wonder where they're at you uh -huh. drive around and find them and yeah they always run up and use the phone or anyway <laughs> Is it a hurry up and wait? Probably. And a lot of times, yeah. Kind of mentality. Probably all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you never get away from that, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, when you first started out until now, like, was it what you expected it would be? 
I mean, you maybe kind of knew because you kind of grew up going, um, but like, did you think about what it would be like 15 to 20 or more years down the road? Oh, it's changed so much, you know, with the technology, the auto steer and stuff. It's just, we were talking out in the hall here yesterday, I believe, some of us. It used to be air conditioning. You'd run them if they, you know, you'd get by to get, to get them fixed. And now it's, you got to stop and fix that, of course. But, you know, we'd have doors and windows we'd open sometimes just to get by. But now they even shut down when they don't have auto steer, some people. Yeah. I can remember the first time Perry and I used auto steer. It was a Sunday. Uh huh. And everybody had gone off because it had rained, but it dried real sudden. So he and I got in a combine. Had some farm help. And we had to set the A to B line uh -huh. how it started, and yep. we didn't know how to do it. Uh -huh. <laughs> the young man was on the phone with me trying to explain it, and I had to explain that I was a, a tortoise, tortoise, you know, <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> ancient, didn't know how to do it. We got it going. I'm still not good at it. <laughs> at our age, we don't want to be good at it. <laughs> you can probably cut it better without, right? Not really. <laughs> Not anymore. I can't. It is really. Oh, it's nice. Yeah. yeah. That feeling of that. Especially you've, you've when done it. When the oh, yeah. header goes in and yeah. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't really think you'd need it on, on corn, but I mean, we just have to have real sense on our corn. Yeah. And I, I do tease our crew, you know, you're not going to charge me for going down the road. I'll pay for when you make the corners, but do I have to pay you when you're just driving, <laughs> riding along in there? Yeah. No. Got to tease them. Uh huh. So you mainly cooked for the crew, right? I mainly cooked for the crew. Did you ever work out in the field at all? You I, know? I did. You know, man, we never, I mean, we never really relied on the girls or Candace to be there full time or whatever. Just, lot. Like we'd let guys go in early. That was my deal. Let them go in early and they'd run it at night and then oh, fill, okay. fill everything up. Sometimes that worked out well. Yeah. After yeah. the elevator would close and the trucks were empty, he. If they had a lot of days in a row where, and they needed some rest, then the girls and I would go out and run equipment. Okay. Fill everything, fill everything up at night. So we done that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, that's a different strategy. Because you needed a break. Everybody needs a little yeah. sleep deal. Yeah, you run too long for two. Yes. What piece of advice, like maybe, did your dad give you before you went out, or did he tell you something that maybe, or or anyone? Well, you know, in my your dad ran a lot of quite a few times. Four to six, and uh, it, I don't know why. I think when you're in it and growing, uh -huh. you know this technology and all the changes just come on you, you're and adapt. you don't you don't realize from point A to B that they were going to change that much. And that's probably you probably remember some of the things your dad told you if something went wrong or whatever. But yeah, know. yeah, you don't. You're in it. And what I is it? Our fourth, forty-eighth year. 48th year this year? Something like that. Yeah. But I can remember, you know, like listening to his mom when she went. She didn't have an air conditioner. She had what, a swamp cooler or yeah, whatever. Those. And she cooked for quite a few men. Yeah, they had a pretty great crew. <laughs> and yeah. so they had a bus. The, they'd cook in the morning and then they'd go shopping in the afternoon so they could go in somewhere where there was air conditioning. Okay. And, cool. Um, yeah. I can remember Before Walmart. I can remember saying we fill the vehicle up with dirty laundry and go to the laundromat. She didn't have the washer and dryer, so I thought yeah. I, I was a queen when I started, yeah. you know. We always had a washer. And but look at the Not difference in campers, how they've now. come from when we started until yeah. today. I mean, yeah. They're just so convenient and handy for us. Easy to move and easy to set up. Uh-huh. Yeah, a lot easier. Right. Yes. Do you have any uh, harvest stories that you want to share with us? Anything crazy happened? Well, my favorite story is when we were in Alney, Texas, and Perry wanted one of my daughters and I to take the service truck to the field, uh -huh. which is a semi. Uh -huh. <laughs> neither one of us drive them regularly. Uh -huh. <laughs> but Perry had showed Tara how to drive one truck while well, the shifting was different in the truck we yep. were taking to the field. And she finally got frustrated, and we were in first gear, and we were plugging along to the field. Me fall on with the pickup, I'd have to step on the brakes every once in a while. And then I had to get on the radio and say, Tara, can you pull over? A tractor with a cullivator wants to pass. Oh, <laughs> yes. it, it took us a while, but we got it. To <laughs> I don't know why we didn't swap out and I try it, but I don't, there's don't a lot. Think she was in low gear, but 
I mean, well, it was a very, very low gear. I had, uh -huh. I, I had to idle and step on the brakes, <laughs> so we know we weren't going very fast. You know. <laughs> oh, there's lots of stories. Oh, yeah. That one with Kara, <laughs> I always get a kick out of that one. And, you know, our girls, they still are able to talk to people more because they went on the harvest. But I think she's always ready to go to the next stop. She really likes to go she places. Has, yeah, she goes a lot. We think she's still got the one. Harvest from harvest. Harvest blood. Yeah. yeah. Changes, yeah. It does. Um, I so, was just going to talk maybe yeah. a little bit about how much the organization. Yeah, the that was my last changed, question you know? of was it okay. what year you guys joined the U.S. We just can't school. remember. Uh, it was in. Greg said we signed him up in 85. Uh -huh. so, so pretty and I'm thinking we were, we were here 84, 85 in there. Mm -hmm. Well, it would be before 85 that we sent Son to Grey Oak up then. So we had been here. So somewhere in that time. As our original. I don't remember where we went first. Do you remember the first? Was it in Texas? Probably. I just, I really can't. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think it was while we were harvesting. And I really thought it was in Kansas, but it doesn't really matter. What did you, or what would you say you've gained by being a member? Oh, just all the good people were like a, a real family. Mm -hmm. And you need something, you just have to ask. And people are so good to us. And yeah, work-wise, I think it helps, you know, to be able to communicate with other harvesters, and share work or mm -hmm. share equipment. Good friends, good yeah. people, you know, yeah. hard workers. When we started coming to the harvest meetings, though, it was a pretty small organization, uh -huh. and it was maybe a lot more um, fun because you knew everybody. Yeah. You walked down. I mean, you just absolutely knew everybody, and, and it's it really kept growing and yeah. growing. And just we did some fun things. Yeah. yeah. And there was no choppers at the time, the earlier days. Right. And uh, it was just all the harvesters, and there was so many harvesters. Yeah. They're so few now. Right. To what, what it, you know, what it's, it was. it's really good to come and see the next generation getting involved and, and knowing that it's continuing. Continuing, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like that too. Thank you. It's yeah, they fun look to meet the that. young ones and see how enthusiastic and, and how much knowledge they have. Like our son in law, the technology, I mean, it's. What he can do on his phone would have taken me a month of Sundays to do. <laughs> and I got I want to tell you a story before you kids were even around. Your mom and dad came to Olney, Texas and got uh -huh. this brand new Chevy pickup, a white one. Uh -huh. And uh, Of course, we, white. We were in yes, and we were in the shade tree one day and he's I mean, what are you doing, Larry? I didn't know him real well. He said he had a seat out, he took the seat out. Put plastic down, yeah. put the seat back in. We were just talking about that the other day. And your mother was a little younger. <laughs> I don't know how long how long you were married at that time, or maybe one year. Probably, I know because you you he was the son-in-law, and your two brothers were there, I think, or one uh -huh. was there for sure. Bruce was there. Well, Bruce, yeah, Bruce and that was probably eight. I think nine. Is that right? That was, That's that was funny. A, yeah, it is. That was a rainy year, I believe, too. Yeah. Yeah, you you gain you get to know people along the road at the well, same stops that you. You stay in the same trailer court. Uh huh. And this is your spot. And if you get to that trailer court, oh somebody yeah, started, somebody's in that spot. They're moving, Somebody huh? took our spot. You know, <laughs> that's your I live spot. there. <laughs> yeah. What well, what kind of advice would you kind of mention the younger um, people? What advice would you give? maybe to your daughter and son-in-law, or just in general? Do you have anything that you... I, I, I always tell Leon, I says, I know it's not the best time right now, but I said, there's not many left, and people do need us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think if you stay in the game, I think there's gonna be good opportunities down the road. Yeah. Pray grain prices come back up a little. Farmers can afford maybe to pay a little more, but there's just not har as many harvesters, which we all know. Right. Yeah. They're all in. They like they're her our granddaughter, she, I mean they're just like they're harvesters. I mean that's it's in their blood. Yeah. <laughs> Can't help it. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to give Jada much advice because she's probably doing a way better job than <laughs> I ever did. She's, yeah. 
I think they both work a little smarter than we work because they've got more technology and you know I just I think they took it to another level. But the, there is a lot more red tape that they have to to deal with. Yeah. Permits and all that type of thing. But yeah. Well, I think that's unless you guys have anything else you want to share. I'm glad that you're taking time yeah. to do this. No, thank you guys for no, I'm glad coming here. Your to your family takes time to do this. You do such a great job. And I didn't see them the first day, with them, but they're just part of the, the whole thing, you know, with the cameras. And if your dad didn't have a camera on his neck, we wouldn't yeah, know. Yeah, we don't know uh -huh. what do. <laughs> like my dad's a camera guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for everything you guys have thank done you. for the industry and for the organization. Thank you for taking time doing this. Yeah, you're welcome. Hope we can learn something. Some oh, fun. yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, thank good. you. Thank you.